Shanghai. This neon city of the future was formerly a hotbed for opium, gangs, and prostitution. Unfortunately, the Cultural Revolution put an end to all that, but after economic reforms in the early 90s, it's become a rapidly developing metropolis. One of the first truly international cities, Shanghai has had immigrants and foreign businesses planting their feet here for centuries, creating a melange of architecture, religion, culture, and a cuisine unlike the rest of China. The city inhabits the old while incorporating the new, as reflected by its citizens that live a similarly dual life, always looking towards the future, but with an eye to the past. Check that out, it looks like the future. It's a lot to take in the first day. Um, my brain's sort of spinning, I'm just trying to figure it all out. So in front of us is Pudong, it's a new area that's been developed uh, for the World Expo and it's also because the industry is, is booming so much in Shanghai that's attracting people from all over, all over China to come here and, and try to start business. So Pudong's being built up completely, um, as you can see with all these crazy, crazy buildings. There isn't really like one aesthetic here, it's, it's kind of a mix of everything. Um, sort of like Blade Runner meets Paris. Man, so much of this is like vaguely familiar to me because of my childhood, the food and stuff and the smells, but it's just like in a totally different context, which is really, really odd. Sticky rice, zongzi. Some chicken feet, chicken feet over here. I don't even know what those are, but they smell delicious. I guess I carry it out myself. It's eight, it's eight for six. They're hot as shit, guys. <laughs> They're like deep, right out of, ow. Right out of the fryer. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> oh my god. That's so good, but holy god. That's really good, guys. It's like, it's got juice, it's like got soup inside, and it, so when you bite into it, it kind of explodes and it's this soft, like thin layer dough. I don't know if you can get a, get a shot of that. See the steam coming out? Like some of these walls you check out, like Shanghai has redone so many buildings here to give the appearance of being like brand new and clean. And you know, some of these buildings are pretty um, in need of repair. But mostly people seem to be fine with it. <laughs> In Shanghai, you can suddenly find yourself lost in a mob. Turn the next corner, and everyone can vanish. What is this? I think this is for exercise. <laughs> this one must be for the waist. This one's for the waist. I feel skinnier already. I need one for the butt. Is there one for the butt? I gotta find a butt machine. To get a better understanding of Shanghai, I met up with two expats, an American, Brendan, and his German girlfriend, Lisa. For me, the, the international culture of the city is really, really, really attractive, the city. And it's good for us as like mixed couple. Mm -hmm. It's just so much easier because in, yeah, in the US or Germany, we would have to like stick to one culture just because everybody does and you want to fit in. Here, we can kind of mix it up because yeah. all our friends are kind of mixed couples or Chinese somehow and so. That's right, on a hot and humid day in Shanghai, we wound up at the fish market. Oh, yay. Yeah, you can see, yeah, so we come here because the fish is cheaper, but uh, so it's pretty, pretty funny too, the scene out here. Yeah, this, no, this is like, Chinatown in New York on a, like when when I was little growing up this is how we bought our fish too but it's not like this scale you know what I mean probably not this variety either yeah I mean they're Plus the fish looks really oh! <laughs> oh no <laughs> I always feel bad for the I can imagine the you guys the two expats going to the fish market and rescuing sea life yeah. <laughs> you don't feel like and ducks Re releasing crabs into the street <laughs> go you're free, you're free now. <laughs> Our spoils in hand, the only thing left to do was to go home and fire up the grill. I think it'll keep cooking though. Oh, sounds good. Um, Cut. Grill fire. <laughs> Are we okay? Attention, nobody was harmed in the grilling of the salmon, except for maybe Brendan's ego. You know, it's so funny, I had a lot of resistance about 
coming to China, a lot of fear. I know you would think I would be eager to come back to the motherland mm -hmm. for me, but I, you know, I had a lot of resistance. I just didn't know what it was going to be like. I didn't know what judgments would be placed on me being American and all that. And but you know, it's so far. This is like just the perfect, perfect yeah, I mean, day. <laughs> Everything yeah, you've really, shown me, uh, everybody's so friendly. I, I think in in Shanghai, which is kind of interesting, you, you have a certain amount of autonomy here too, and you can kind of do do what you want. There's no social pressure. What you should do on a Saturday, or what you know, you can go around, go up to the fish market, fool around up there, and, and yeah, just spend the day on the bike. It doesn't matter. Yeah, spend the yeah. There's like no family in the background that would like to see you every weekend. Of course, we're missing them when every day yes but um, I'm talking with them every week twice but still it's not the must go so it's um, yeah it seems to be more relaxed while talking to Brandon and Lisa it dawned on me that in Shanghai I was a foreigner and maybe that's part of the fear I had coming to Shanghai to realize I wasn't Chinese but what does it mean to be Chinese or Shanghainese when Virtually everyone in the city is a foreigner. Ultimately, the city is just a place. A home, a job, an escape. What it is for me, I don't know yet. But I already have fond memories of it. crazy the congestion here there's like lots of people and there's lots of different types of uh, what are they called mopeds and vespas and cars it seems kind of lawless but I think there are rules that I'm not really quite sure yet <laughs> what they are this guy's on his cell phone and riding a moped the computer computer on the back so here we are again on a busy street with all the merchants and stuff and if you look up there's still like tons of laundry out out the windows it's almost like decorative. Instead of Christmas ornament, they put their undies out. Shanghai can be a mad city, but amidst the frenzy, down an indiscreet alley, you can find people in their pajamas, living and working peacefully within the chaos. Under a gingy sign in an O2 familiar hole in the wall shop, you can get some fresh ink. And around the corner, dinner, which I was about ready for. Ooh, grilled meats, come to me now. I had no idea what anything was called, but getting fed in Shanghai is simple enough. You just point and eat. I don't know what kind of meat it is, but whatever. It's crazy that you're like, I would never think to take my motorbike down this way. It's so narrow. Literally, guys, it's like three feet apart from the other food stand, so I don't even know why anyone would think about taking this way. Nothing like a little sausage grease in the hair. After a few more mystery sausages, we decided it was time to go meet Feng. Originally a painter, he lived in China's first artist commune. After it got shut down, he moved to Australia, but eventually found his way back to China and opened up a fish and chip shop, which was a huge success. That led to another restaurant, this time in Shanghai. Southern barbarians served dishes from Feng's hometown, Yunnan, a province which borders Vietnam. Ingredients for dishes like fried goat cheese, Yunnan ham, and deep fried bugs are flown in directly from Yunnan each week. I regret the bugs. Lots of people like our stuff because we are fresh. You know, even when we start at the moment, the bean is not good enough, we still make sure every week we change them. If we expire it, we just slow it. I opened the Yunnan restaurant, yes, because, yeah, you're right, in Shanghai they're not very popular. That's because they don't know the Yunnan food. They're not like a Sichuan food or Cantonese food. Everybody know it. So, everywhere is Sichuan food in, and uh, Cantonese food. But actually, Yunnan food is a very quality food. You know, we use lots of the herbs and lots of the organic stuff. So, which is make the taste very different with the very special with the like compare the Cantonese or Sichuan Sichuan food. Feng also uses his restaurants as galleries, giving people a glimpse of how China's citizens view their own country. The creative and economic freedom that Feng enjoys today would have been unimaginable only 60 years ago. Yeah, my, my family in my hometown there is again the big, biggest family. 
in my hometown there. They used to have lots of uh, uh, poverty, but after the revolution, they lose everything, they got nothing. Yeah. You know, the from the, before the 1949, they are such rich family. After the 1949 to now, and all of my uncle, everything, they're very poor life. Ironically, the government that stripped his family of its wealth is now helping him expand his business. Fung has opened a second Southern Barbarian. With a selection of 90 beers from all over the world and more bugs. Because when, when, in, when in Beijing that moment, a long time ago, when I was still artist that moment, you know, artists laugh, just drink. So just drink. <laughs> okay. So that moment I really drank lots of beer. When in Australia, I meet one friend and he take me to the farmer. Uh -huh. in, in his his friend's place, okay. Yeah. Could they make the beer by themselves? Yeah. So oh, they they made their own. Beer. <coughs> they made the they have the small wow. own own brewery over there. So I'll try out. Very different. So from that moment, make me have some make me start interesting with the beer. So after that, when I'm traveling anywhere, I will try the local beer. Everything I want to try this. No, I only need one drink. Oh, I don't drink alcohol. That was good. This being China, we closed out the night in a karaoke. The rest is history. Fiona and she grew up here in Shanghai and we're at the, um, it's a really sexy name, hold on, let me get it right, New Ten Steel Creative Industrial Clustering Park. And we're going to be going to the Red Tower, I think it's called, and it's a really famous sculpture park here in Shanghai. Let's go. What? Okay guys, I'm going to tell you this, but I am terrified of clowns and um, this is probably my worst nightmare represented behind us. I'm, I don't like clowns at all. <laughs> she thinks it, it makes her feel happy. It makes me feel terrified. Sperm. Oh, no, no. I said sperm, but they're frogs. <laughs> I said sperm, but they're frogs. Oh, get your mind out of the gutter, Tina. You你你感觉这个腿，是什么意思？这个腿啊，我是我觉得它像是很多国家，就是你看那个红色和呃红色的和那个呃红色的腿和那个黄色的五角星，是代表中国。呃，那个蓝色的和绿色相间应该是美国
I, I think I need to get a picture of that. McDonald's right at the bottom. But I was told there really was a place where things were preserved just as they had been for centuries. So the next morning, in the pouring rain, we headed for Lizang, a rural town I knew nothing about. Ready to get some fresh Chinese air. It's crazy to watch how quickly everything shifted leaving Shanghai to coming out to the countryside. I mean, it's really lush, it's really green, and it's really mountainous. It's, it's a lot, it's like wide open spaces, more green, more farmland, but the little towns in between are pretty, pretty dilapidated actually. But I think, I mean, he keeps commenting that it's a lot like where he's from, which maybe that's my own judgment about, <laughs> about it. We had no idea where we were, but we managed to meet up with our contact, Claire. A little confusion, a stroll down a dark alley, and we finally got to meet our host, Madame Melka. A Parisian expat and interior designer, she came to Shanghai for work and never looked back. In Lizang, she's restored an old lock factory into a rustic guest house where she hopes visitors can get a glimpse of what Claire calls, quote, unquote, true China. After a quick cup of tea, we crammed into a couple of cars headed for the town's only restaurant. After an ass-rattling dirt road and huffing and puffing myself up the side of a mountain, I was starting to wonder if this place could really be worth it. To say the place was breathtaking would be an understatement. Oh look, food! And more food! I really wish I could describe how good it tasted, but suffice it to say, you've probably never had country cooking like this at your local Panda Express. Okay, so now we know white Chinese white wine is very, very strong and not good for the daytime. But oh, at night. That's Guoqing, Melko's husband. Let the debauchery begin. More on this later. It's hard when you live in a city, it's hard to feel community. Yeah. In Shanghai, it must be difficult to have a community. Just then, I realized that for Melka and Guoqing, Lizang isn't just some weekend escape from Shanghai. It's not a house in the Hamptons or Sag Harbor. It's their way of preserving a culture and land that's slowly disappearing and how they pass on values to their children, which have been lost in the ever-expanding ambitions of what was once a small fishing town. Oh, they're all in the fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what he's trying to show me that's preserved in the school. A long time ago, this used to be where like a lot of rich people would come and the opera was here. And they would, the audience would sit here and look that way at the stage. I think it's because of the landscape, uh -huh. there a lot of panther here. You can imagine you're in a valley and then you have these beautiful, striking, sharp mountains. Wow. It's really beautiful. Yee. Ah. Uh. Sun. Yeah. <laughs> we stepped into a 200-year-old home whose inhabitants were probably just as old. Yeah. <laughs> I feel kind of sad here, even though I feel like it's very important to preserve this history and the original artwork and the original wood. It's hard to see for me, and maybe that's my own bias, but to see people still living in these 200 plus old houses with no running water um, and modern day garbage everywhere. Maybe that's the problem. You know, everybody's really happy here. Everyone's really happy. It's just a simple, simple life. And that's what, that's what I was being told a minute ago, that it's just a simpler life. A beautiful, generous, and open one. <laughs> Guys, I thought I knew how to skip rocks. I guess I don't. <laughs> that night, Guo Qing broke out the good stuff and told the stories about growing up in his village that really weren't unlike the stories of my own childhood in New York. 
Outside, we watch films from Shanghai's bygone film era, drinking early into the morning. A part of me didn't want to go back to Shanghai. I felt as though I was leaving something behind, but I wasn't sure what. A piece of my cultural self, perhaps, still living in the people who inhabit the village, preserved in their homes, their food, their way of life. And though they appear to live in what we would call poverty, they seem to be really, really happy. There lingered a magic quality in Li Zhang, one I can't quite put my finger on. I won't be forgetting it, or Melka's family, anytime soon. When I was getting on the plane to, to come to Shanghai, I was actually I was pretty nervous about it all. I didn't know at all what China was going to be like. I just have had these long-term fears about coming here. But since touching down, it's been just this complete whirlwind of sights, sounds, smells, and just experiences that, that um, I couldn't have hoped for something better. I realized that there really is nothing to be scared of. Shanghai is this completely bustling city with so many different facets that every corner there's an a, amazing surprise. Uh, Madame Melka said to me one night in conversation, she said, China, or Shanghai specifically, gives you energy and inspiration. And that's definitely what I found.